Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and today's continuation of the What's Next series covers the Milwaukee Bucks and you could make the argument that this team had a disappointing end to the season, but in reality this year was a huge step in the right direction for this franchise. And they did all that with largely the same roster that they had the year before on a team that only won 44 games. The only major addition was the fact that they brought in a new head coach in Mike Budenholzer and then some minor stuff like Brook Lopez and trading midseason for Nikola Mirotic. And that should give Bucks fans a lot of comfort that as long as Coach Bud is there and Giannis is playing at a near MVP level, they should be one of the top three or four teams in the Eastern Conference, if not the league, every single year. And it's important that they have that comfort to fall back on because there could be some pretty big changes coming to this team this offseason, and not many of them are likely to be positive. For various reasons that I'm going to get into later, this wasn't necessarily a roster that was built to be kept together beyond this season, so we could be seeing a very different Bucks team next year. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what's next for them. But first, let's go ahead and talk about some building blocks, and the first one has to be Giannis Antetokounmpo, who took a pretty big leap in his play this season, is probably going to be the MVP, and I really don't have to say much about him. He's outstanding at scoring in the paint, still needs to work on his three-point shooting and his free throw shooting. If he does those two things, he should easily be able to average 30 points a game and has also continued to improve as a playmaker, as an outstanding rebounder, an athlete, physical specimen. Uh, you guys already know everything there is to know about Giannis, and he's going to be the key to everything they do moving forward. Second is Chris Middleton, who in my mind is pretty close to the perfect two-way wing or two-guard in the modern NBA. He has great size, is a good defender, can shoot extremely well, but also has some on-ball playmaking ability when called upon if Giannis and Eric Bledsoe and guys like that need a little bit of help in terms of creating plays. But then on the other hand, if you just need him to be a complimentary guy and play off the ball and make shots, then you don't really have to run plays for him either. So he's a really, really important asset for this team. But the problem is, as is going to start becoming a trend, He's going to be a 2019 free agent, so the Bucks will have some decisions to make there. And next up is Eric Bledsoe, and I'll admit this is a guy that I have not been a huge fan of in the past. I didn't like the fact that he didn't have great size, I didn't like the fact that he wasn't as efficient in his game as I thought he should be, and I didn't really know how well he contributed to winning, and last year's playoffs certainly confirmed some of those things to me, but from an all-around perspective, if you're taking out the three-point shooting numbers, this might have been his best or one of his best seasons in the NBA. He's a really good, strong, small guard defender. He gets to the rim well and has worked on his decision making as well and slightly less usage in Milwaukee than he's seen at other spots in his career and just recently signed a new four-year $70 million extension that prevented him from being once again a 2019 free agent just like some of the other players that I'm going to talk about. So as a result of that extension, they have him locked up on a deal that pays between $15 and $20 million a year through the summer of 2023 and it's really important that he continues to improve and continues to be worth being paid that much money if this team is going to get to where they want to be. Moving on now to a player that's one of my favorites on the Bucks roster and that is former rookie of the year Malcolm Brockton. He is just a really outstanding all-around player. He's not necessarily a point guard but he can play make. He's not necessarily a specialist as a shooter but he can shoot extremely well and he's not necessarily a pure scorer but he can also score really well in addition to providing some things on the defensive end. And I just think he's such a critical part of this team to kind of fill in the gaps of what some of the other players might not do exceptionally well. He can kind of provide a little bit of everything. But once again, he's a free agent this offseason, although he is restricted. So he's going to be a really, really important player to keep an eye on and see what the Bucks do with him moving forward. Second to last now is a late signed free agent from last offseason that kind of came out of nowhere to be a really important piece for this Bucks team, and that is Brooke Lopez. I'm sure many of you know it's been well documented his transition from being one of the better post scorers in the league uh, in his time with the Nets, and then since he's come to the Bucks this season, he just basically all he does is goes out there and shoots threes. Now, I do think it was a little bit overblown uh, how good of a shooter he became. Obviously, it was very exciting. It was really interesting to see his transition from post score to shooter. But if you're looking just at his percentages, he's basically at a league average level, although he is shooting on high volume and he does provide value in terms of a floor spacer as a big, but I think maybe we're overblowing his value just a little bit, but still an important piece for the Bucks. And once again, a 2019 free agent. Next up now is Nikola Mirotic, who the Bucks got from the Pelicans via a midseason trade, and he was kind of disappointing with the Bucks. He shot relatively well in the regular season, but in the postseason, his shot just completely disappeared. He did not play well for them at all in the playoffs, but he still has value as a floor spacer and as someone that could certainly help them 
moving forward if they decide to bring him back because surprise, he is also a 2019 free agent. So as we move into the free agency section, it's pretty clear what the issue is for the Bucks. It's not that they had a bad season. They won 60 games. They have this really good core group of players, those top six that I just talked about. They lost to the Toronto Raptors in the conference finals in six games. And that's a team that as of this recording looks to be on their way to potentially winning the NBA finals at this time. Game five hasn't actually happened, but the issue is they might not be able to bring back all of those guys for next season. So they might end up being a worse team next year with a higher payroll just because they have so many 2019 free agents. So as you look at their payroll, the Bucks are basically at the salary cap right now at right around $107 million, but that number is going to change pretty drastically by the time free agency actually gets underway because they can buy out George Hill's contract to create about $17 million in space. And then Chris Middleton is going to turn down his $13 million player option for next season that opens up about $30 million in space, gets them down to $77 million in payroll, and opens up right around $30, $31 million in salary cap space, which on the surface sounds really promising. Right up until the moment that you realize they're paying $77 million for basically Bledsoe, Giannis, and some other guys that either didn't play that much this year or didn't play particularly well when they got their minutes. But on the surface, you might be thinking, wow, these guys have $30 million in space. They just came off of a 60 win season. They should just go out and try and get another star to pair with Giannis and then also Eric Bledsoe as well. But in my opinion, they have two guys that Really, they can't afford to lose. Two guys that they should prioritize bringing back in free agency if they want sustainable long-term success, and that is Chris Middleton and Malcolm Brogdon. Like I said, Middleton's gonna turn down his player option and Brogdon is a restricted free agent, and those two guys are probably going to be very highly sought after in free agency. Teams like the Mavericks are rumored to be very interested in bringing in a player like Chris Middleton, and then Brogdon, given his age and how good of a season he just came off of, should be highly sought after as well. And in my opinion, it seems likely that they're both going to end up staying in Milwaukee and the Bucks are going to do everything they can to bring those guys back. But the question is, at what cost? And in my opinion, it's not unlikely to think that Chris Middleton might get a $25 plus million a year contract this offseason and then Brogdon between $12 and $15 million a year only because he's had a few injury issues in his career. And if that's the case and the Bucks bring back both of those guys on deals right around that, all their salary cap space is suddenly used up just by bringing back their own players. And that's without even considering the fact that in that situation, they haven't brought back either Lopez or Emiritich. So yes, technically they could try and pursue a near max free agent with their cap space, but given the guys that they have currently that are free agents, it seems unlikely. So let's just assume moving forward in this what's next part in the free agency section that they bring back Middleton and they bring back Brogdon, but they don't have any cap space left after bringing back those two guys. What do they do after that? Well, they could just commit to bringing back the exact same team as last year, re-sign Miritich and Lopez, and approach the luxury tax with this team that just won 60 games and potentially contend for a championship next year. Or they could also go the other way and just bring back one of them and potentially use the mid-level exception to make up for the loss of the other player or to fill out some other holes in the roster, potentially more shooting, more wing depth, things like that. Or they could just let both of them walk and keep a little bit more buffer between them and the luxury tax. But either way, like I talked about in the beginning, if they wanna bring back the exact same team that just won 60 games, they're going to have to spend big in order to do so. And if that was the route that they took and they brought back all four of those free agents, including Lopez, including Miritich, what kind of contract value are they getting out of those guys long term. I'm not concerned about Middleton. I'm not concerned about Brogdon, but are Miritich and Lopez going to end up being worth what they're being paid beyond next season or the season after that? And that's a really important thing to consider for this team, because as I'm going to talk about a little bit later, they have some really big payroll issues to consider over the next couple of years. Now, if I had to give a prediction on what I think is going to happen, it's probably going to be a situation where they bring back as many of their own free agents as possible and let either Miritich or Lopez walk. And it's really important that that group continues to work moving forward. Obviously, we had every indication this season that it will continue to work and this will be a very good team in the East, but there are some things to consider like Miritich's struggles, Rodgen and Middleton's injury issues at times, Giannis continuing to progress, things like that could be issues. And if it doesn't work, they're gonna end up paying a ton of money for a team that isn't a championship contender. And that's not really something that they can afford. Because as I touched on a little bit earlier, if they decide to bring back this entire group, they're going to be well over the cap before Giannis even gets a huge raise 
in the summer of 2021 when his new contract kicks in that's likely to be a super max deal paying him pretty close to 50 million dollars a season now to be fair the salary cap will be higher at that point they'll have shed a little bit of salary and he should be worth that or at least close to worth that over the next couple of years because of how good he is and how young he is and how much room he still has left to grow as a player but as i said if they're going to commit to bringing back all these free agents and paying Giannis nearly double what he is right now then they have to be at least close to championship contenders to justify that payroll in their milwaukee market now in the end even though some of these things do scare me the bucks should still be very good next year and moving forward but they've raised the bar for themselves this season to where now they really have to be competing for championships especially if they're going to commit as much payroll as they are so even though the future does look bright they do still have Giannis. the possibility still exists that they either lose some free agents this offseason and aren't as good next year or overpay for a team that isn't a championship contender and having that much variance in where they could go from here isn't something you would expect to see from a team that was as successful as they were this season and there you have it that is going to be the end of today's video and i thank you all very much for watching once again my name is tucker if you missed any of my previous videos then be sure to check out the boxes on screen thanks again and i'll see you all next time